Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is a tutorial on how to make a title block and insert into your page. So, um, I've got AutoCAD loaded up here. So this is just on the AutoCAD home screen. So if you haven't seen this screen before, maybe you want to check out uh, one of my other videos, um, which just shows you the overview of AutoCAD 2020 and some of its main features. That's in one of my previous videos. So, uh, what is a title block? So this is a basic title block that I just found on Google Images. Um, this is, I presume, from ProfiCAD. Um, and what this just allows you is just to have some basic information around the drawing. So um, ProfiCAD have decided to have a picture of their logo. It's also got stuff like who's the, the responsible department, any technical reference or technical documentation that's attached, who created the drawings. This is a person within their organisation who created it who approved the drawing, so from a quality point of view. What type of document is it? What's the document status? So is it a live production drawing? Is it a prototype? Is it just a, a drawing that you've used as a bit of a R&D exercise or, or a sketch for a client? And then we have the titles of what actually is the, the drawing. When it was issued, uh, ID here, so obviously like an identification number. Language. Number on the sheet, so if you have obviously six sheets within a drawing, it'd be numbered one to six. And the, the rev, so the rev stands for um, how many times the drawing has been updated or revolution, so how many times has it been revised, essentially. Um, so you know that if you if you the document's been revised two or three times and you have re, um, revision one, then you know that you're not on the correct drawing and it will have to be discarded. So, how do we create this in AutoCAD? So, we go to AutoCAD, okay. So, we're going to start a drawing, okay. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to check that we're in the correct unit. So, all I'm going to do on my keyboard is type in units, as you can see on the screen, and then enter. This is now loaded up the drawing units window box. So, I'm just looking at my precision here. So, it's a bit high, really, for just a basic drawing. So, I'm going to have two decimal places. Insertion scale, so the units of scale, we are in millimetres, which means we're drawing in millimetres also. And then any lighting effects, this is if you do any sort of um, rendering or modelling afterwards, it's just using the international spec. So I'm going to OK this one off. The next thing is to do is uh, essentially we need to start from a, a origin. So a good origin really is to start from zero, zero. So I'm just going to set up a origin limit. So I'm going to type in limits. And I'm just going to set my model. So I'm going to set the lower corner. So it's asked me to specify the lower corner. I'm going to use 0, 0. It's asked me for the upper right corner. Now, most of my drawings are only ever in A3, so A3 paper size. Um, I only really draw in landscape. So A3, the top right-hand corner of an A3 page uh, on landscape is 420 millimeters. Comma, it's just a tab over, so I'm using the comma function. Okay and then 297 millimeters, and then enter. And that's locked in my unit. So if you see down the bottom right, okay, on the history, it's just to say that I've gone from 00, zero to 420297. So that's obviously grid coordinates to specify my A3 page. So if I start to zoom in and out or pan, which is the middle button on my mouse, Essentially, I still can't see what I've done because the limits are behind the scenes. You can't see the limits. So all I'm going to do is draw a rectangle. So REC for rectangle. Enter. Start from 0, 0. So 0, comma, 0. Enter. 420, comma, 297. Enter. And as you can see down here, this is now a visual representation of the limits on my page. So you can either pan and zoom in manually to get it to your desired um, display size or if we zoom out and move it into somewhere completely random okay i can use another function so if i use the zoom function so z o o m enter if you look down the bottom here it's asking me for some couple of commands so if i hit a i can go for zoom all so if i hit a for all this will show it within my limits Zoom again, I can show you the centre, so I hit C, that took me to the centre. 
specify the center point. So I might say the center point here is 200 by 200. And magnification height, let's say one. And that would take me to a 200 by 200 with a zoom magnification of one mil. Go again, zoom, enter. I could hit dynamic, visit D. Okay. This is asking me to specify the corner window, so I can click once, click twice, enter the scale, and it will zoom into that scale. Zoom again. So if I hit E this time for extents, that takes me to the extents window, which again, um, because I put a limit in, will just show within my limits. Zoom. So now I'm in P for previous. I can have, next one is S for scale, okay, so I can scale my view. Then I can have W for a window, or I can zoom into O for an object. So I'm going to leave mine as E, because that's a nice size. Okay, so this is my A3 drawing. I'm just going to zoom back one. And now in my drawing, okay, I need to create a title block. Now, if you do an A4 page, obviously you have to remember that A4 will be roughly half the size of A3. So if you're going to have a title block, it'd be good to keep it to one set size so you can use it on multiple pages. So here we go. So now I'm going to use the rectangle function again. So or I can click rectangle up here. My snap's on, so I can lock into my bottom corner when I go into rectangle. Okay. And I'm just going to draw roughly a box, roughly halfway, trying to keep. So I'm going to go with minus 200, my 100. Okay, so that's going to be a 200 by 100 box. And just using then, again. So going back to the drawing, okay, we have some some boxes now. So my first box, I'm going to use the offset command now. So to use the offset, okay, you specify how big you want a box. So let's say 50 mil, make four boxes. Now, if I choose a rectangle, it wants to offset the rectangle of 50 mil. So what I need to do is explode. That's going to change this rectangle into individual lines. So now I can select that line is an individual, this line is an individual, that line is an individual, this line is an individual. So offset again. Let's do 50 mil. Okay, I'm going to take this line, move left or right on my mouse, 50, 50, and 50. It's just going to be some, some nice boxes. I can do 50 down. It's going to be a halfway point. Escape to exit the command, and if you hit the space bar, reload the command. I'm going to go half distance again, say 25. That just gives me some nice set boxes. Now, going back to what we've got, is we've got one nice big view here, and then smaller views. So what I can do here is actually trim this line out here. So go for TR for trim. Okay, I'm going to select this line because I want to get rid of it. And have to select the next line which intersects that line, so that's where the two lines cross over. Enter. And it asks you to then select the removal, like so. Escape. So, next one is we have the text function. So, you can go up to the top here. Okay, drop down with multi line text or single line text. Well, all my text I want to just be on one single line rather than having it as a paragraph style. So, I just hit single line. Zoom in on my mouse wheel. Okay, go back to the drawing. There's is all from the top down, so I'm going to hit from the top. So I've clicked the top, it's specified my text size, I'm having 2.5 as my specified height. And your text is going to be zero. And now I can start typing. So this is going to be in block capitals.
So, obviously, you picked up, I can't spell responsible. There you go. So, that's got spell check, which is obviously quite good. Responsible department, enter twice, we'll drop it down. Okay, if you do enter twice on the end of the text, it cancels off. So, there's my text. And yes, it's obviously above the line, but I can use that later. Next one, we're going to do the same again. So, space, click. Enter for 2.5, enter for 0, and this is technical reference, enter twice. Then we have created, so enter twice. Same again. Um, this one was approved. So next one we have, let's go here, the document type, document status, so this one we're going to have is title. Date here. And then I can make some more boxes in a second. So let's move these a little bit more in a nicer format. So if I go to move, it's M O V E, I select each of my text. When they go blue, it means they've been selected. Okay. There's all my text blue, and it's obviously on down the right hand corner here. It's sound that I've got eight in total. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Enter. Specify a base point. So, obviously, if we select the base point by our mouse, or we can just use common origin, which is zero, zero. Then, we want to specify the second point. How far away do we now want to move? So, I want to move maybe two mil across and two mil down. So, I'm going to do two mil across. Remember, it's x and y coordinates comma, and then let's do minus two. Okay, not too bad. Obviously, you just need to move it slightly more than minus two, so I'm going to press Control and Z to undo, and go back to move again. Select my text. Enter. Specify my base again, zero, comma, zero. Let me know two was fine and let's do minus, I'm going to say, six. There we go. So what that's done is move it two from the left-hand edge and then six down from this top edge. That's in a nice location. So in here, on our picture, obviously we have the our company logo, so I'm going to insert my company logo. So I'm going to go to insert, I'm going to go to attach. Okay, so there's the attach bar. Now in my pictures, I can't find the pictures. Ah, there we go. Little pictures. So I have a company logo here, which is the example ink. So I've just made a sort of really brief logo. So there's the path. Okay. And I'm going to click this in to here. I'm just going to click it by hand. Scale factor. So it's scale factor of one. So that's a nice size. Inside here. So what I can do as well is click on 
the image and I can also drag and drop it and make it smaller and make it bigger just by using the clicks on the side. But that's a nice size. So now all we have to do is what I like to do to make my life a bit easier is we can just go back to single line text. Okay, find the midway point on your line. So make sure this midway snaps turned on, which it is. Okay, specify the height, and I'm just going to put some crosses in just to represent my text box so it helps me move it easier later. I'm going to do control P click. Now to make it easier all I'm going to do is actually just draw a line across just so I can make sure it's in exactly the same place, keep it nice and standardised. I'm just hitting control V. Okay, and I can just then click the line and delete it afterwards. So that just helps me align everything up nicely. And again on the move, I'm just gonna select one, two, three, four, and just move them from the base. To my limb. Same again, just going to do the same again for technical reference um, and copy them down to the document type. And same again for title and date. And I'm just going to move them two mil a bit further from the edge. Like the same. Now, obviously, if you want to be nice and neat, you can obviously measure them and make sure everything's exactly the same. However, I'm happy with mine currently. Now, at the minute, I have these two boxes here. I could use them for um, another kind of component. So I could say, actually, I need to put in projection and scale. So again, just specify the base point, so it was 2, comma, minus 6. And again, I'm going to draw a line. Just roughly. Hold shift to lock to 90 degrees. Okay, turn my text box. So obviously in an ideal world, we would look to lock it in a bit further, but this is just a quick basic example on how to show you quickly. So there is my title block, nicely incomplete. So I'm just gonna remove my A3. Okay, and I'm now gonna save this as a block. So I'm gonna save this as a W block. So select all. Okay, I'm just gonna save this to my documents. So in my folder, I'm just put it in my screen capture folder, I just call it title block. Save. Okay, and I'm now going to get rid of it. So let's make an A3 page. So I'm going back to my rectangle. So putting in my first coordinates is the base, and then 420 comma 297. Okay, zooming out. This is my A3 page. I'm going to go insert, back into insert again. Block some other drawings. Find my files. So I save it in screen captures and my title block. Open. Okay, 
And because I drew it obviously on my base point, I can just now click and enter in my title block. Now also, if you haven't done it that way around and you can just place it absolutely anywhere, okay, simply go to the move command, select your block, hit the enter button, and now the easiest way to do it is click the right hand edge, pan, come in, lock straight into your border. Now, this is the page border, so what also you could do, if we just we're going to move our block again. On most drawings we have what we call a page border, so I'm going to explode my rectangle into four lines, okay, and I'm going to offset to make a border, so I'm going to offset by 10 millimeters from the top from the right and from the bottom and the drawing standard so bs it says that we need a 20 mil border on the left for stuff like hole punching and um to sort of leave any bookmarks or tags for any information so there is now my page now this doesn't look particularly smart so what i'm going to do is actually remove my page lines and just leave corners so when i come to print my template it just gives me a nice window lock um, from my plotting. So I'm going to go back into trim, Okay, click once, move the mouse, click again to select all, enter, and now I'm just going to come all in and remove the external lines and the internal ones just to leave my page corners and my rectangle for my drawing space and then enter to confirm. So in here now I know that this is the border, anything inside here is further enough away from the edge of the paper and so I can hole punch will then be printed. So now I'm going to do is just move, so move again, enter, specify the corner and then we go. So that is now my A3 page now complete. So What's good is obviously now I can draw in this space here. Now, ideally, what I want to do is put my page in the actual layer here. So on the model, what I'm going to do is now go to W block again, hit enter, save. So I'm going to just go back into my screen captures and I'll call this A3 block. And then select the objects and click once. Click twice, save the whole lot together, enter, okay, and okay that. Now go to my layout, okay, I'm going to click on the viewport which is here and just delete it just to get rid of it. Then go to layout tab, page setup, okay, modify layout one, and I'm going to change this to A3, 420 by 297. and then make sure it's in landscape and hit OK and then close. This is my layout one now. Now when I go to insert, insert recent blocks, if I go to A3, it's picked up, but obviously I've got my block. And now all I'm gonna do is pan the edge to move, move my blocks to the corner just to make it a bit easier for me. Okay, I'm going to pan to the edge, bring in my block, double click. Okay, I'm going to use this and zoom into the corner as best I can because there won't be any snap points on this page. And click to accept. Now as I come out, zoom back out again. This is now my page. Okay, back into layout now. And I'm going to put my viewport back in here so I can see my everything in my model space. So go to viewport, which is in layout viewports. Okay, I want a live view, so I'm going to click on the live one. I don't want a rectangle because I haven't got a rectangle shape. I'm going to drop it down and choose a poly. Okay, and I'm going to run around the edge of my border. Like so and then back into the middle, hit enter, and now this has dragged my model space in here. So if I now get rid of this, OK, 
Okay. Everything I now draw, so I could draw some circles, a polyline. Okay, when I go to my layout, if I double click in the model space, I can pan, I can move this, I can scale, so come down the corner to scale, one to one, I can scale half size, I can come in scale twice the size, and just pan your view. If you use a scroll bar you can set a manual one and it just updates down here so always try and use set scales. Just get rid of my block now. So set scale one to one I can now come in double click the paper space okay and now I need to be able to edit my block so if I come out hit explode okay Click, explode the paper, so I can now choose the, the lines again for the edge of the paper and the border. However, because this is a block within a block, I have to explode again to change the type of block back into a enter. Now I can select everything in my block. I can go through, fill out, so test. Remember uh, block capitals. Zero one. I can put in the date. So today's date is the third, twenty twenty. This is created by me. Approved. Obviously, I'm just going to put me again because there's no one else to approve it. Scale, in the end I chose one to one. Technical, let's put test to one. Ha ha ha. Projection. Obviously you could put a projection symbol if you want to draw a projection symbol as well. That's it complete. Now I'm going to hit print. Okay, I haven't got any printers attached, so I'm just going to print to PDF. Just use Adobe PDF, choose my page size, A3. Okay, I'm going to print now to a window, select the top, select the bottom, center the plot. Okay, make sure the scale is one to one, hit your preview button. Okay, there is my template, and obviously, because I'm using the student version, it just comes up with saying I'm using the student version, so I can't use it for a production drawing. And then you just hit print. Going to save it, so I'm just going to save it in my screen grab chips folder. So just call this test 01. So there is the view, and there is my drawing with border and title block. So I'm going to rename this as A3. Free. Free L for landscape, or I'm just going to put in landscape. So, what if you want to do this as A4? So, if I now think about it, so another rectangle, 0, 0. For a4. Now A4 this time is 210 by 297 for portrait. Obviously I just need to get rid of my drawing I made. So again go back to insert. So as my block was 200 it should fit in which it does. So I'm just going to place my block. Remember again explode our rectangles like four lines offset still applies exactly the same 20 mil to start off with on the left reloads escape space to reload the command 10 mil for everything else so that should now make this gap just under 200 so i may need to trim my box slightly escape into trim 
10 turns, and I get rid of the bits I don't need. Enter, now I'm just going to go to move. Now I imagine this is not going to fit because it was done 200 by 100. It's slightly too big. Just going to move it back out again. So what I'm going to do is explode the block because I need to edit this block now. So what could I do? So if I move, I need to shave off a slight function. So all I'm going to do is move my text. Okay, move my text. This time I'm going to select the base of my part and I'm going to do it manually. So I'm just going to move it over like so. So I've just got the edge. Now I'm going to move some lines. I'm going to move that line, this line, this line, and again move it from the same place. Move it over just so there's enough gap, like so. And I hit my example ink now on the corner. Move this, specify the base again down the bottom corner, move along. Okay, so now I can realistically move this line and close up the gap. Like so. So I've just shaved it enough off. I'm going to go into trim, select all my lines and trim off the edge and then just go into my text and then just delete some of my like so so I could double block this time or I'm just actually just going to move and then block the whole lot so I've got to explode it again later so move bottom right into the bottom right. Still slightly too big, so I just need to do slightly bit more editing. So control Z. Just move it slightly more and together. Click this line actually, I'm just going to move it along and then trim again. Okay, uh, I just need to make my example a little bit smaller just to fit in that space. Move so it's it roughly in the middle. So now projection scales. Obviously, this is now slightly smaller. So I'm going to go in and just drop this one down. So just remember when you drop it down, it's alpha uh, shift. of some of the crosses and I'm just going to move this now okay get rid of some of these crosses now
hopefully this time we're in, so we're in the money. Obviously you could just draw this um, and then just copy the text across from the other one just to make it slightly quicker. However, I'm just showing you for purposes um, that you can just sort of make it fit as best as possible. Um, this time W block, so I'm going to select my objects, select all, all, enter to accept, three dots to place your file, and of course my A4 block. Okay, I'm going to save my block, happy with that one. This time I'm going to layout two, get rid of my viewport, change my page, so layout page setup, modify layout two, obviously I want this portrait, happy with that, close this, insert my block, okay, pan into that bottom corner, same again as last time, getting as close as you possibly can, so it should be minus 7.5 by 20, that's just a the zero zero is up in this corner here. Last one to do is pop the layer viewport back in. Now this time there is a small gap here. However, you could just put in a rectangle poly, but because I want to do it matching my other side, I'm just going to put it in as a poly again. But you could just put a rectangle in, just extend it. Once you've done it. Just move off the line, hit enter, there's your poly. Back into the model, I'm going to rename A4. Portrait. Back into my model, I'm just going to get rid of this one. And now when I draw an object, However crazy it is, I've got an A3 layout which I can edit and set the scale for. I've got a portrait which I can double click, edit and then set the scale for. This one must be probably half scale, like so. And again, all I have to do if I want to print this one so this time I have two views with two active ones, so I'm going to do a batch plot. So I could save them all as one batch. So you can do DWX or PDF. However, I just want it to go for my A4 this time. So I'm going to go for a plot single sheet, PDF, A4, portrait, this time back to the window. Centre the plot. Preview. Happy with that. Print. Um, just gonna call it, let's leave it as it is. And then here's my example. I obviously didn't change the title block, but like so. So there we have A3, A4, and a model, like so. I uh, hope you found that video um, useful. Uh, any comments or questions, please pop in the box below, and I will help you out. Um, please stay tuned for my next video. Remember to subscribe to keep watching what I do. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.